decorative style um, is really referring to the uh, the motifs and iconographic aspects of uh, of ornament on on objects which might have a utilitarian function. So, for example, I'll cover the me uh, the the mediums of uh, furniture, ceramics, glass, metalwork. Yeah car you know uh, carved and molded ornament painted surfaces but it intersects with if, if what is called the fine art world so um sculpture painting yeah and 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 beyond that it's it's looking at how design changes um in in particular periods and and my aim is to give future working professionals uh -huh. the skills the connoisseurial skills to be able to look at objects recognized roughly when when they were made possibly where they were made as well and and the, there's practical purposes in this it's it's a, a an advantage in the job market to have been sort of highly educated visually highly educated yeah. understanding the art world and and actually in professional practice bearing in mind that the conservators end up working with objects which mm -hmm. might might not have painted services uh which would relate to painting in itself to flat art in itself but also the historic carvers who will understand the nuances of change of historic periods yeah. and obviously have those practical skills to to replicate or to uh, innovate from them depending on what's being asked of them yeah um, well, I'm guessing, like during the teaching, then to to uh, equip students with those skills, you spend a fair bit of time looking at specific objects and deconstructing them and visually analysing them and learning the different terminologies around those objects. Is yes. Right? So, so one really important thing is the vocabulary. There's a specific vocabulary. One of the problems that you find with objects is is actually having the words fit to describe them yeah I think we, we, you know lots of people will study paintings and you'll talk about color and you'll talk about composition and all those formal notes yeah that are, that are part of being able to communicate mm -hmm. and and the the three-dimensional world or the relief sculpture you you actually need specific vocabulary that enables you to make an accurate assessment um and work collegiately you know if you're mm -hmm. in a team of of, of professionals and, and and many of the skills that I, I try and teach are actually based on myself learning at an auction house, learning how to catalogue objects. Okay. And uh, you know, with my masters was 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 fine and decorative art. So I actually covered the whole range. You know, uh, when I did my own masters, and it's finding the words to describe it. And and you know, we are teaching future professionals, so yeah. to have, have that vocabulary is important and 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 a, and a significant um, part of the methodology of teaching. Yeah. And the chronology of the lectures, does it, what, at what period do you kind of start and then what, what period do you work up through until? So the starting point is around about 1400. Um, I look a little bit, I don't look in great detail at this, uh, but I sort of start off with the International Gothic and the major characteristics of the International Gothic and, and more widely throughout the whole course, I look at the, the wider history, cultural history, economic, trade, uh, you know, big histories that I don't think you can separate uh, from the artistic world yeah. as, as a form of text, uh, but, but also as a documentation of, of norms, if you like, as close as you can get to them. So around about 1400, maybe a, a tad before, to look at sort of Gothic style, going right the way through in these blocks, which I've given stylistic names to, to as, as the sort of simplest way of describing them, up to the immediate post-war period. So we end up on sort of Festival of Britain, uh, you know, 1951, and a little bit into 60s design. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and, it, and it actually covers the time at which in the first half of the 20th century when the description the decorative art description actually changes into the word design and that actually reflects mm -hmm. the industrialization and the means of manufacturing yeah. uh, for, for a mass market and 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 so so i, t I tend to sort of even change vocabulary sort of in yeah. the 20th century to reflect that and could you j just mention a little bit about how you teach? Like, what, what's the kind of setup in the room? I mean, how many students at a time are you lecturing or holding a seminar for? 
So we, we put both groups so in the first year, both the conservation and the historic carving groups, everyone from that joins in. Yeah. So usually there's, a, there's between 15 and 20 in the room through, through lectures. So it's set up nominally as a lecture, but I, I talk, I want, I want people to, to ask questions at appropriate moments, you know, uh, but, but to actually we have sort of, we break off for discussion. So although I, I sort of a, a set effectively give a lecture, it's not a lecture with me at one end and students sitting in the dark another end. We're in a seminar set up yeah. uh, in the room and people will, will, will sort of ask a question or join in uh, and, and we, you know, I try and make it as, as, as fun as possible. And so although I've developed this course over 10 years and, and yeah. added to it and enriched it, um, even as I'm talking, because, because there's so much that comes back from the students, I'll think of something new or, some, or someone inevitably will suggest something new, particularly people who come from, you know, different uh, geographical <coughs> regions, different countries, who will, will sometimes have an insight mm. uh, that I haven't seen before. And, and we'll sort of we'll go on... <laughs> on a short fantasy ride about sort of imagining what, what things might have been like. So try and use a bit of imagination as good old RG Collingwood uh, wrote in the, in the, uh, in the 1940s, you know, the, 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 the use of imagination in, in history, the idea of history. And I think that sort of um, that spark of joy that you get by using imagination when you're, when you're saying, well, imagine what this might have been like, or if you look at it in a museum now, but think what it might have been like in that, that amazing chapel in, in Rome or, or whatever. And, yeah. and the idea of spectacle and sort of theory ha comes in um, to, to think about, you know, how one sees things. And, I mean, and the ultimate aim is, is to in, not only give those connoisseurial skills and be, being razor sharp in the job market, but actually to, to give students that self-confidence to have complete freedom mm -hmm. of thinking to be able to make the strangest connections possibly across a thousand years yeah. when thinking oh isn't this what's being done here hasn't that been done before it might look different yeah. but it, isn't this what it's about and and with that you can have theoretical approaches as to what's being done here what the purpose of art and decoration is is it propaganda is it just reinforcing hierarchies mm -hmm. who's the patron how is it seen and, and ultimately that that enrichment i think intellectually is the ability to be able to look at something know roughly when and where it comes from and why yeah. and to enrich the the, the the ways of you being able to see as a as an artist professional yeah. and i'd imagine that that kind of that kind of critical engagement then can play directly into the students' practice in the workshop, whether they're conservators, you know, making informed decisions mm -hmm. about the kind of work that they should or shouldn't do on objects, or whether that's carvers making decisions about what's appropriate in terms of uh, a restoration project, uh, project or yes. a conservation project. Is 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 knowing when you're working on an object, whether you are conserving it, and and obviously the the, the sort of the, the the chemistry and the the uh, the use of um, laser cleaners and so on is is one aspect of it. But you but you're also understanding what the object is. Yeah. Um. And uh, the design. I mean, quite often. I mean, what one one lecture I do bring out the the trade of the West because this is a Western art uh, examination. But I do bring in trade with the East Asian world and the Islamic world to look at how motifs are exchanged and become fully digested yeah. in modern art forms. And so often you'll get conservators, for example, working on something that has lacquer and yeah. is Asian lacquer and motifs that are Asian as well. Um, so although we don't teach it there, I think that sort of side of things is, is sort of uh, uh, possible for students to explore even sort of, even when they're not officially my students anymore. Yeah. And also that, um, in the carvers in particular, I, I think that role again of engagement, of imagination and, you know, in London, there are a huge number of objects that are worked on by carvers from the sort of late 17th, early 18th century, the time of church building and so on, and yeah. Wren and Hawksmoor and so on, that era of building where to really understand that, that, that uh, impact of uh, 
William Kent, for example, Neo-Palladianism, um, uh, Wren, Grinling Gibbons, you know, what, what, what a Baroque style of carving means as, a, as an adjective and as a period. And, and actually then you go and see a Grinling Gibbons carving in a church yeah. in London and you say, okay, I understand what he's doing and what the sort of overall feel of the style is. Even understanding about the history of um, people moving around, peripatetic carvers, which mm -hmm. goes right back to the medieval period, but you see it in, for example, Fleming's Netherlandish uh, uh, people coming and working in England, that idea of exchange and the mm -hmm. ideas that are taken up. Um, it gives you something far richer than simply the object you're working on and just, you know, using your eyes to perhaps cop copy if it's a replacement or, or innovate upon a style. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> it sounds like a fabulous course. Um, and I know you've been developing it over 10 years, so I'm guessing it's just got better and better every year. You're really refining what you're doing now yes. according to their needs and your developing interests and the development of the subject more broadly. So, yes. and it and it actually shows in in what um, the carvers who you know I see right through uh, with my colleague Michael we see right through from the first year through to the to the third year. Yeah. Actually, in, in the way that they engage with that that history, that rich cultural history, we actually see the results in the mm. dissertations at the end of it and the way they look at objects yeah. is, is unrecognizable from 10 years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 change is extraordinary and you know we're teaching we're teaching people that all have their abilities the stu we learn as much from the students as they do from us yeah. and you're co you're constantly learning either from people who are already professional masons for example those are regularly part of the student body but people come from very different backgrounds from totally unrelated to the art world at all yeah. and and bring in a, a, a richness that 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 actually makes it a, a hugely rewarding um occupation for for the staff yeah okay i think that's really useful i i, I hope students will find that really useful i think yeah. they will. i hope so cut out the dog barking <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can, but yeah, we can ignore that. Oh, <laughs> At least it's authentic. He's shouting Lil. <laughs> um, well, well, it's, been, it's been really nice to see you. Uh, again. <laughs> nice to see you too, and, Tom, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be in touch again soon.